a feeling. I've actually been inside a video recording machine before. <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> oh, hello, and welcome to this very first edition of Cartoon Cavalcade on video. Well, that's the way we usually start in our studio shows at Cavalcade, and then I'd usually come on and start talking to somebody. In this case, an old lamp and a robot. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Paladin's first remark. I knew it. <laughs> Glenn's always been full of hot air. <laughs> See, would you like to say something, Totty, would you? Oh, no, I would never be so rude as to say you're always blowing your own trumpet. And that gives you some idea of what I have to put up with from an old lamp and a wee totty robot. Anyhow, welcome to Cavalcade and my balloon antics. My uncle used to collect those. What, balloons? No, antiques. Don't be silly, Paladin. I said antics, not antiques. An antique is anything that's very old, an old relic. Good now we're back to you again. Back to me. <laughs> Take the tricks if he's ever zoom around the sky. Step into his taxi cab and soon you're riding high. And he'll fly you to Saturn, to Jupiter and Mars, to Mercury or Venus, any one of a million stars. Take the trip with Zippy Zephyr, race through outer space. Satellites and meteors can't match his dizzy pace. There's a lot of laughter in the thrill a minute too. When you take a trip with Zippy Zephyr, go way out with Zippy Zephyr. He's a taxi driver that is new. He's interplanetary. He's a taxi driver for you. The year is 2064. The place, space. The 80 billion citizens of the universe go about their daily lives industriously, maturely, and intelligently, with one exception. Zephyr, Zephyr! Uh-uh, the boss. That's right, you vacuum brain. Now bring that cab back to Utopia on the double! Yes, sir, Mr. Mars. Over and out. Out is right! Lunatic, bring in that robot driver I had built. Gosh, boss, you mean you're actually going to replace Zippy with this mechanized monster? You bet your atomic grease gun I am. But, but why, boss? That's why. Don't worry, Mr. Mars. I got the other fellow's universal license number. It was 0854732963. Eight seven four three two one. Sovereign satellites. That's my car. It was standing in the parking lot. By golly, you know you're right, boss. There it is in lane number six, and also seven, eight, nine, eleven, and fifteen. Zippy Zephyr, you're fired. I'm replacing you with this robot driver. He's safe, dependable, and completely trustworthy. And besides, I'll save on taxi meters. Please, sir. If I lose my job, I'll also lose my girlfriend, Rosie. Don't let romance fade, fade, fade out of my life. Hello, Interplanet Taxi Company. Send a space cab to the corner of Utopia in Valhalla on the planet Saturn. Hmm, planet Saturn. Corner of Utopia in Valhalla. Please, boss, let me go pick up that passenger. I'll prove to you I'm better than that walking pinball machine. Oh, uh, come on, boss. Give him just one more chance. All right. The one who returns first with that passenger gets to keep the job. Is that fair? Fair. Rootin' rockets and all our Luna luck, Zippy. Five, four, three... Here's a kiss for good luck. Blast off! <laughs> Now to catch up with that automated astronaut. What do you know? He's given me a lift. I had that pile of nuts and bolts figured all wrong. Oh, 
so he wants to play rough, huh? Well, two can play at that game. What happened? Who turned out the lights? I've heard of being tarred and feathered, but gummed and feathered? That's ridiculous. Now, let's see now. That was the corner of Utopia and Valhalla on the planet Saturn. What's taking that car so long to get here? Interplanet taxi at your service, sir. Well, I, I didn't call for a... Uh, step right in, sir. What on earth? I guess you haven't heard of our famous red carpet treatment, sir. Where's Sam? You sure this is where he said to meet him? Yeah, the corner of Aurora and Borealis. Where in blazes are you taking me? To Euterbia, just like you ordered. Euterbia? Look, Rosie, here comes Zippy's cab now. Goodness, how can you tell it's Zippy? That's how. Well, Zippy, looks like you get to keep your job. Uh, gee, thanks, boss. You won't regret it. So, there you are. Oh, never mind about the fare, sir. It's on me. Oh, yeah? Well, this is on me. And as for you, I'm suing you for every nickel you've got. But I, I don't understand. Hello? Hello? This is Saturn calling. Where's that cab I ordered? You, you picked up the wrong passenger. I'd say an even thousand ought to cover the damages. 980, 990, 1,000. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Not so fast, Sam. The cops! Officer O'Ryan! What's the meaning of this? Don't you recognize this mug? It's Saturn Sam. He's wanted on 87 planets and 12 satellites. There's a thousand dollars reward on him. Here's your reward money, Zippy. A thousand dollars? Oh, goodness! He's fainted! It must have been a shock of meeting Benjamin Franklin face to face. Zippy, darling, you're wonderful. Some guy's got all the luck. Why can't something like that happen to me? Just once! I did it! I did it! I hit the jackpot! Ooh. Let's get cracking on our balloon antics. I'm sure you like balloons, don't you? Well, we like you. Yeah, take the nose, take the nose. It's all right. He's got bad manners, Glenn. Yeah. You carry on. You can say that again, thank you. As I was saying, everyone likes balloons, except those of you, perhaps, who expect them to burst, of course. Just remember, balloons are very strong and will really only burst if you have a ragged fingernail or a rough bit of skin on your fingers. Otherwise, nine times out of ten, you can handle a balloon with a great deal of confidence. I've got two ordinary ones here you can buy anywhere. There you are. I've tied them together, you see. And I'm going to get a longer one like this to make you something. I'm going to twist, twist the balloon. That's what you have to get confidence in, twisting. Just do it like that. I'll show you about that later on. Twist it up together like that. Now, we need a, <clears throat> we've got a neck and a body. We need a smaller one to make a pair of ears here. So if we do just something like that, there we are. And we've got ourselves a creature. We've got the two hind legs, two front legs, a body, a tail, a neck, ears, and a nose. How about that? You can do almost anything with balloons, even this. Hello. <laughs> well, here I am in the film library, all on my own. So I'm going to try a bit of balloon modeling myself. <laughs> now, I think you do this this way, is that thing? Oh! Oh! <laughs> now. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> I think we should move on. Ah, let's move on to Manderston by Duns. A beautiful country house. I've already been there, as you can see.
to do that with her anything else. Fancy open, having to open your own door, even. Goodness gracious, it's me. What's the world coming to? I have to clean my own shoes next. Uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Smith. Uh, who am I? Not the cook. Took us years to find the right one. Wouldn't like to lose her now. No, sir, I'm Smitten, the new butler. Ah, the new butler! Uh, you're the 25th this month. One a day is about the average. Oh, come on, follow me. This is your new room, Smitten. Hope you like it. Make yourself at home. Now, the kitchen is just down the hall. And if you run, you should make it in about seven minutes. I'll expect lunch at one sharp. Marshmallow was wrong. In seven minutes, there is a second. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Smith. You're just in time for lunch. Ah. Well, Marshmallow likes it spot on time, you know. How far is it down in a mile? Mile and a half. <laughs> <laughs> if you time it exactly, it is three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, get the eggs on. For the first time in your life, they'll probably be boiled right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice cup of tea. <laughs> Come on, time to take the soup up. Thank you. 
Just a moment. Where, where's the soup? There, there's nothing here. Ah, yes. Well, my lord, uh, just let a little bit of bother in the kitchen, my lord. Uh, the cutlets caught fire, and it spread to the apple tart, and uh, Cook had to use the soup uh, to put the fire out, my lord. Oh, well, uh, uh, tell the cook we're delighted she saved the house. Well, well done. Thank you very much, Lord. Well, well done. Smitten! Is that you? You bungling idiot, you blithering fool! Do you realize what you've done? That's a main vase! That's an impossible! Not like you, you're replaceable! Get out! Get out! Fire! Fire! Finished! Well, that's it, Cook. I'm leaving. Lord Marshmallow asked me to do something I just didn't like. He asked me to find another job. Oh, another one of my Ming vases smashed! Where's he gone? If I get my hands on him, he'll never bottle again, I can tell you! Oh, dear, my lord, what's your blood pressure now? Oh, blood pressure him! He'll never be the same again! He better not show his face! Well, that was Manderston by Duns, a beautiful country house. Uh, by the way, if you'd ever like to visit it, wonderful for a day's outing. Oh, that's the bowler I actually wore on the film. Remember that? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> now then, I think it's time we had a little visit somewhere else. This time, Swifty and Short. <laughs> You look before we got up here. I thought you looked. Can't you make it out? I'm too close to the clock. Step back a little. Okay. Wait a minute till I get a grip on this five here. Well, what time is it? It's either three o'clock or a quarter after twelve. Can't be a quarter after twelve. That's our lunch hour, and we're not eating. And it can't be three o'clock. Why? Because my watch says one thirty. You better fix your watch. Okay. Hey, wait a minute, it's this clock here that's wrong. That's why we're up here, to fix it. Okay, okay. Now get a good grip on that hour hand and shove it back two numbers. Got it? Got it. I said shove it. It's heavy. Hold it, I'll give you a little help. I'll see if I can loosen up these gears a bit. Stay with it, Cassie. You can't see the Cassie. You're going to stop it. Someone stop it. Someone has to. You can't see the Cassie. You're going to stop it. Someone stop it. Someone. Great, Shorty. You hit it right on the nose. Yeah, my nose. There must be an easier way. Okay, now take that minute hand and push it all the way down and make it 130. <coughs> this minute hand is heavy, Swifty. Everything's heavy to this guy. Need any help, Shorty? No, Swifty. I'd rather do it myself. Okay, just brace your foot on that little trapdoor behind you and push. What's that? What happened? My foot's caught in a spring. Gotta watch those springs, shorty. They got a lot of dough. Get out of there at once. Hey, I told you to watch that spring. Shorty! Shorty! Where are you now? Trapped between 
the two ones and eleven. You ought to go for the astronaut bit, Shorty. I can't stand height. Might as well wind the clock while you're up there. I'll see if I can reach the winder. Let me set this minute hand here, and I'll come up there and help you. Whoops! Look out, Shorty! Yahoo! I told you to watch it, Shorty. Where are you? Inside the loop at the bottom of the six. Well, stay there. I really got no place to go. Now, can you reach the minute hand and pull it down? Maybe. Can you reach the winder and give it a couple of times? Just about. Okay, you wind and I'll pull. Take in. 85 cents. Whoa, what a cheap crowd. Tie it in a handkerchief and throw it up here. Here you are. Don't I get anything? Does the organ grinder pay the monkey? Once in a while, I give him a banana. You're lucky you got your handkerchief back. Well, clock's all set at 1.30. I'll toss this rope down. Tie it to the loop at the bottom of the six and I'll slide down. OK. Now pull it tight. Is that tight enough? No, keep pulling. What's that noise? Is something giving? No, everything's fine. Keep pulling. What's that noise? It's nothing. <laughs> it was really nothing, Swifty. Just the six. It broke loose. Some joke. Very funny. Very funny. There you are, that's it, 1.30. Okay, job's done. Swifty. What's the matter now? I think we made a terrible mistake. What do you mean? By the time we got the clock set, 15 minutes passed by. So? So now our clock is 15 minutes slow. Look at the clock on City Hall, it's a quarter to two. That's the key clock. All the clocks in the city go by that one. So? So there's only one thing to do. What's that? We'll push that clock back to 1.30. Shorty, you're a genius. Come on now. Just a little more. There. One thirty. Swifty. What now? I just thought of something. Shorty, don't overwork those brains of yours. Supposing everybody in the city finds out they wait 15 minutes overtime, they'll kill us. Shorty, you're a warrior. You're a genius, but you're a warrior. So? So let's get out of here, quick. Right. Watch that spring. Uh-oh. <laughs> to watch that spring, Shorty. Hey, Swifty. Yeah? You got a dime? Why? I want to play that record again. I like it. I got my hands on you, Shorty. You'll be the phonograph needle. <laughs> Swifty and Shorty, two of my favourite cartoon characters. Now, I happen to be right now in the editing room, film editing room, and I'm holding in my hand Dr. Finley, would you believe? Episode 5, Part 1. There's a one-off for you. Actually, I think it's a good chance. I was going to do some modelling balloons for you here right now. <laughs> Try and model something. Ah! Oh! So I... I think I'll leave it to the other fella. He's much better than I am. Here are just some of my uh, balloon friends with me here. You'll notice Rusty's not with me today. Well, the reason is, of course, that he's a dog. And it's very likely to be frightened if one goes off with a bang, these balloons, I mean. So if you have a pet with you at the moment watching this one, I'll try and not burst this one, all right? And do it as quickly as I can. <laughs> there we are, there. We need a little pair of ears to go on. And then we have made it. I wonder if you can guess what it is, can you? <laughs> There we are, a giraffe. Oh, you caught me. <laughs> Actually, the idea of our outside cavalcades was to show you all the different places that you could go and visit. Now, my Aunt Maggie had never actually been to Blackpool, so I went there and I sent her a postcard from Blackpool on film. Up to now, I'd only seen the tower from a distance. Now was the time to explore it from the inside.
could resist looking in a mirror. And in the tower, I found some that shows you as you're not, if you see what I mean. <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time, and last night I saw what I came for, the Blackpool Illuminations. Boy, are they really something. I started here at the North Pier. Put our name up in lights. <laughs> they nearly got it right, too. The lights are so beautiful, and there's thousands of them. I'd love to know how it all works. I'll bet they have a team of people working night and day to keep the lights on. in microchips to test all the thousands of bulbs in the illuminations. A 
I took a walk along to the tower last night. I wanted to see it near too. Oh, you should see it when it's lit up. It's a sight to behold, I can tell you. Then the most extraordinary thing happened. Oh, no! The lights went out. Everywhere. Oh, not again. Where's your ten pence? You can bet they had a team of people working on it instantly, though. I could see them springing into action. Suddenly, they all came back on again. Trust Blackpool to get everything right, eh? And so, Aunt Maggie, that's what's happened up to now. I'll see you when I get back. Love from Blackpool, GM. Blackpool, magic. If you've never been there, you should try it. It really is magic. Talking of magic, I'd like to introduce a little wand waver. <laughs> Cute little girl she is. She's called Honey Halfwitch. <laughs> Where are you, honey? Honey! Honey! Honey? Oh, honey half-witch, bright and sunny, she's as cute as a bunny. She's half wizard and half girl, she waves her wand and you're in a world. She's full of tricks and sweet as an apple tart. A half-pint pixie, sure to win your heart. Half-witch, what are you up to? About the 90th floor, I guess. What's at the end of this line? Uh, a kite. you got a bottle here with a note in it. Gee, no wonder it wouldn't fly. Mm, well, any kid that finds this note, please come on up and play with me. Signed, Honey Half-witch. So that's what you're doing. How many times have I told you I forbid you to play with real kids? 7,943 times, Cousin Maggie. But I get lonesome, and you won't play bouncy bully or jacks or anything with me. I'm too old for that jazz. Here, play with your doll. I can't. I ran out of pins. Well, here's a pad and pencil. Go draw some pictures. Okay. She's a little witch girl, just like me. Only she has magical powers like Cousin Maggie. Stronger even. Gee, wouldn't it be swell if I could just wave Maggie's wand a couple times and bring the drawing to life? I'd have another kid around to play with. But I guess that's asking too much. She'll always be nothing but a little paper witch. Just... She's gone. Oh, pardon me, did you see a drawing? <gasps> Look! Paper witch, you've come to life. Yippee! I got a new friend, Yelly! What's all the racket? Who's that? Look, my drawing came to life, Cousin Maggie. A kid witch like me. Can she play with me? Give me that wand. I told you I don't want any other kids around here. Now stand aside while I make her vanish. Please don't, Cousin Maggie. She could help me around the house with <laughs> chores and everything. Oh, yeah? Well, let's see her sweep up. <laughs> Sweeps up a storm, doesn't she, Cousin Maggie? <coughs> yeah, <coughs> a dust storm. Zoom, zoom, just leave the room. <coughs> what else doesn't she do? Oh, please give her another chance. She uh, makes things. Paper wits. Make Cousin Maggie a new hat. No, I like my old hat. Wait till you see the new one. Oh, this makes me look old. Change it back this instant. Ah, got 
gonna do is disappear. Isn't she smart? Can't she play with me, cousin Maggie? Can't she, huh? You've got the gall to ask me if you can play with it. Why, of course you can play with her. I'll just finish up my sweeties. Gee, I wanted to follow the broom for a broom ride. Hey, the window! Draw some more pictures. Stop! 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 I've changed my mind. Now you're for twosies. Big my name is Becky. My husband's name is Bob. We come from Biloxi and the Silver Ones. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love old-fashioned steam trains. I think that's the reason that I went to Bowness. Another place that you could visit. It was a little adventure that started like this. Hercules Pernou. Though I say so myself, I am a very famous Belgian detective. I was feeling tired after solving one of my most difficult cases, and so I decided to take a well-earned vacation. Little did I know I was about to encounter one of my most baffling mysteries. It was about to unfold. But first, you had better meet our fellow passengers. grateful if you didn't tell anybody I was here, okay? You see, I'm a, I'm a cop. Inspector Columbus, my name. Yeah, and I'll certainly be seeing you again. You can count on it. Uh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot what I forgot. My name's Target. I'm a Glasgow police, and I've never lost a case until today. If you happen to see one, it's like that. Tickets, please. Tickets. Tickets, please. Thank you.
<laughs> I can't understand it. Then I was asleep. And when I woke up, there he was. Gone. Madame, first of all, do not distress yourself. Help is at hand. Who has vanished? Why, Mr. Jason. When I decided to come on this trip, I was a little afraid. But I knew Mr. Jason's presence would dispel any of my fears. Could you describe Mr. Jason, madame? Oh, well, he, he was... He had lovely, lovely large brown eyes. And he had rather a large, long nose and very strong face. And he was, he was rather well-built, too. I take it you had known Mr. Jason for some time? Oh, yes. I, I met his mother and father some five years ago. They were German, you know. And, of course, Mr. Jason was your constant companion? Yes, but how did you know? Ah, there's very little. Pierre no, does not know. <laughs> I am a right no. <laughs> May I ask you one or two more questions, madame? <laughs> I wonder what all the commotion was about, Motson. I know you feel I shouldn't get involved in any kind of case at this time, but I feel I should do. Come to the case, Motson. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I was just about to eat a hamburger and a strawberry milkshake when I heard a scream. I, I knew it was a scream because my wife always screams like that whenever I take her up a cup of tea first thing in the morning. I don't remember why. Uh, I, will you excuse me? I'll have to go and solve this at the scene of the crime. There's always a crime, you see. Always a crime. So, excuse me. Ah, Lady Tuffinos, you say that Mr. Jason was here when you fell asleep, and yet I see no sign of it. There's no clothes, no baggage, no hats, no sticks. Can you explain that, my lady? <laughs> oh, I hate to see a lady cry. I shall return when you're more composed, madam. Do not upset yourself, madame. Please to confirm to me the following. I have my notes here. You boarded the train accompanied by the missing Mr. Jason. This was at 10.45, precisely. After some time, you fell under the spell of sleep. The motion of the train, no doubt. When you awoke 15 minutes later, voila! There was no sign of Mr. Jason. So, you screamed. Ah. <laughs> Am I correct, madam? So, allow me to continue, if I may. We know Mr. Jason was of German origin. He was gentle of nature and of strong body. And could he have been kidnapped, Mr. Pernod? I almost have the answer, Lady Toffee knows. But first, I have to find the guard of the train. Stand on the seat just to see out the window. It's still, man. <sighs> Hello, sir. Just as I thought. I think you can, my man. According to my calculations, we should be arriving at the destination about now. We have, in fact, arrived. Would you be so kind as to tell all the passengers to meet me in the waiting room? You too.
Voila. Now to clear up a little mystery. There is no doubt that one of you is a Napa. <laughs> you will notice I do not say kid Napa. Let me go back some way in our little story. <laughs> Lady Toffee knows. You did something you have never done before. You took your constant companion, Mr. Jason, with you on holiday. You knew he would not be welcome on the train. The railway do not like you to do such things, my lady. <laughs> Dogs are not allowed in the compartment. Mr. Motsen? Oh, Mr. Jason! Ah, yes. Mr. Jason on, is the most on, wonderful on. German shepherd. And the Napa was the train guard. Oh, <laughs> he saw Jason. the dog in the compartment oh, and took him to a safe place. Oh, <laughs> Where else with the guard's van? <laughs> He left you to enjoy 40 weeks, my lady. Do not distress yourself, my lady. There will be no charge, except for Mr. Jason. <laughs> you will, of course, have to pay his fare. <laughs> it is a pity my fellow detectives uh, were unable to <laughs> pit their wits against mine, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, sin again. What a pity. Isn't that amazing? You get all that in a tiny wee tin like that. Well, up to now, we've managed to avoid the gremlins getting into the video machine. But it's time to let them come in right now with a story called Bad Time Story, if I can find it somewhere. Where do... We're the gremlins, colourful gremlins. We're the cause of all the troubles every place. And the only time we're glad is when things are going bad for the silly creatures of the human race. Aha! Uh -huh. We're the gremlins, terrible gremlins. It's no use for you to run away and hide. Oh, it doesn't matter where, for you'll find when you get there that the gremlins are awaiting right inside for you. The gremlins are awaiting right inside. <laughs> the fountain of youth, I shall bathe in it and remain forever young and handsome, as I am now. I have searched for many a year, but still no fountain of youth. Oh, woe is me. I have grown old and feeble. Now I must find the fountain of youth. Hey, Minnie. How about helping that old geezer find a fountain of youth, huh? Yeah, we'll make him feel young again. <laughs> Eureka! I have found it! Yeah, yeah. There were 
this once in Indian village where all the girls were married except one. Pocahontas, my daughter. You are many, many moons old. If you now find them husband soon, you will be a heap old maid. Is no brave in village whom I love. Greetings, great chief. I, Captain John Smith, have come to make friends with my Indian brothers. I just love helping folks become friends. <laughs> White man bring pipe of peace to smoke with his red brother. To our friendship, chief. Oh, honest engine. I didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> Boy, that's hot stuff. But I thought of a way to save them. Oh, no, not again. The whole tribe was gathered around Captain Smith, and they were all <laughs> set to light the fire when... Stop! Me love them, that beautiful brave. Me finally got them husband. Uncle Goody, you ruined everything. I'm going out and make my own bad time story. Wait, and be come back. Now, where did he go? first cartoon cavalcade on video. I've enjoyed myself. We hope you have. Just think about it. Anytime you want to meet us, you can pop us into the video machine and we'll be there to entertain you. Until the next time we meet, you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.